Guitarist Caleb Quay remembers going big on Elton John's second album. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Elton John's debut album, Empty Sky, was not released in North America until 1975. It was squeezed between Elton John's first greatest hits album and Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. So up until 1975, most people thought Elton John's self-titled album from 1970 was his debut, which didn't help because, well, it was self-titled. And back in the 70s, a lot of first albums were self-titled. Well, Caleb Quay played on Empty Sky from 69, as well as Elton John. And the classic Tumbleweed Connection, the soundtrack to Friends, and Madman Across the Water. And then he came back for Rock of the Westies and Blue Moves in the mid-70s. In our exclusive interview with Caleb Quay, this is part two of our interview with the great guitarist, I asked him if he noticed a difference between the production, well, the size of the production from 1969's Empty Sky to 1970's Elton John. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That was a bigger project. Uh, that was a situation where, and of course, budget was involved with that. That so so there was a decision made that um, by Dick James and the leadership of the company there that for that, uh, as you say, the self type the Empty John album, Elton John album, that was actually kind of like a last ditch attempt to get him off the ground. And even when they sent him to when he on his first trip to the U.S. at the famous Troubadour uh, gig, you know, all of that was a last-ditch effort to either sink or swim. So it was like, okay, what do you want to do? You know, okay, I want to do. Let's let's we've we've done like small, you know, intimate, you know, rhythm section. Now I want orchestra. I want to use some of my classical training and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I want orchestra. That's when we got Paul Buckmaster in to do some string arrangements and just expanded the whole thing conceptually. Uh, um, basically, no holds barred, you know. And so um, Dick allowed him to do that, and um, you know, it cost more money but by nowadays standards. I mean, it'd be ridiculous. I think it was like you know five thousand pounds or something. It was like, <gasps> what you want? We're gonna. It's what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we went into Trident Studios, which was a brand new studio at the time. We were the second project in the studio. The first project in that studio was the Beatles doing Hey Jude. So we went in there thinking we just we're walking on hallowed ground here. We're on sacred ground here. The Beatles were in there last week. You know, okay. You know, so it, it was really interesting, and and it was funny because as the sessions started to go, and we're getting this sound, you know, a new production team, Gus Dudgeon and and Robin Cable, the engineer, who was brilliant, and so they're getting this whole sound, and um, word started to spread around studios in London, and and people started to show up to listen. You know, Jeff Beck showed up one time. I'm thinking, what's he doing here? You know. <laughs> Because the word had gone around, there's something happening. There's some new sound coming out of Trident Studios. And it was the Elton John project. Yeah, but what did you think? Because I, I hear from musicians, sometimes they're so close to it. To them, it's just a session and they love it and they're into it. But when everyone from the outside starts going, hey, man, something's going on. They go, what are you, crazy? It's just us playing. You know, it's funny. At one point, uh, I, I did think that. You know, I was thinking, what is there something going on here I don't know about? You know, <laughs> We'll have more of our interview with Caleb Quay coming up next week. It's, I think, 11-parter. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. This is John Bowden and Rocky Street Music.